When Connie Svensson failed to show up for work, her colleagues and boss started worrying. Her boss ended up going to Connie's apartment to check up on her and see if everything was okay. But what she found was a horrifying scene. Connie was found dead in her bedroom, brutally murdered. But what truly happened to Connie that night would end up being a strange mystery to this day. This is the case of Connie Svensson. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Elin and on this channel I cover true crime cases that have occurred in the Nordic countries. There are no content warnings for this case, but this video will include talks about murder, so if that's something that you don't want to watch, then I suggest you click out of this video now. If you like my channel, please subscribe, and now let's get into the case that happened in Denmark. So the only information that I could find about Connie on the internet is that she lived on the island of Bornholm and was well known on the island. She had a large circle of friends as she was 51 years old at the time and recently divorced. She was known as a hard and enthusiastic worker and she worked at Hotel Hoffman as a waitress. On the 1st of September 1997, Connie Svensson failed to arrive for work and this alarmed her colleagues and her boss since she was always very punctual and would always call and let them know if she could not come to work. Her boss subsequently decided to do a welfare check at her apartment since she knew that something was just not right. Around 6 to 7 p.m. she arrived at Connie's apartment and found that the front door was unlocked. Entering, she found the apartment silent, moving through the flat until coming across Connie's bedroom. There she saw Connie laying on her bed without moving. At first she thought that Connie was sleeping in her bed and went to wake her up and then she saw that her eyes were half opened. She was laying naked on the bed on her belly and she had been beaten and strangled. Her arms were down by her side and the duvet was pulled up. Her boss describes the events like this and I quote, I still remember it clearly. On the way to Bornholm and with the rocky island in sight, I thought that this case would probably be one of the easy ones. A relatively closed society where everyone knows everyone, in the middle of the Baltic Sea, a victim who was known by many people. How hard can it be? But it was to end up being one of the most difficult. So Connie's boss called the police and they arrived at Connie's home. Upon the police arrival, it was clear what had happened to Connie and that she had been murdered. The first thing that they saw when stepping inside the home was Connie's shoes in the hallway and they went up to her bedroom and found Connie dead in her bed just like her boss had found her. According to the police, the way that Connie was found was not a natural way to lie, which could be a sign that the perpetrator tried to make her death look normal. Judging by the surroundings in the apartment, it was clear quite quickly that something completely different than usual scenarios had happened before the murder. So the investigation started and it showed that Connie had last been seen on the 31st of August 1997, uh, on the evening leaving for home following a night out with her friends. She had been in town with some friends at Café 18 and close to 11pm she just went home. She wasn't in any company when she left and she was seen walking alone through the streets after 11 p.m. Checking the crime scene, police also concluded that there were no signs of forced entry into the apartment. There was wine and smoked cigarettes at the table in the dining room, suggesting that Connie and her killer had enjoyed a pleasant time together before the killing. Six cigarettes all in all had been smoked by an unknown man, and from the cigarettes a full DNA profile was obtained but never matched to anyone. This is actually how the Golden State Killer was found, that they had a DNA profile and managed to find his relatives through genetic genealogy and eventually found the killer. The Golden State Killer, for those of you who don't know, is an American serial killer and sex offender who actually was a police officer and he's said to have stalked his victims before the killings. 
He committed the first crime in 1974 and they matched his DNA in 2017. So this was actually 43 years later and he's now in prison for the rest of his life. Anyway, the cigarettes coupled with the wine led police to believe that Connie knew the killer personally and likely considered them a friend, spending hours together before something went wrong and the evening ended in a murder. The police strongly believe that she let her killer in willingly and that she either knew him or then he was trying to gain her trust. The crime scene also suggested that he had helped her with some practical stuff in the apartment before the murder, but I did not find any specific information about what this actually was. One interesting thing about the cigarettes was that the killer actually had chewed the filter, which is a habit that police link to somebody who works outdoors, suggesting a fisherman, farmer, or a seaman. Often outdoors men are faced with needing their hands free or severe wind, leading to a habit of biting the cigarette to keep it in place. The murder came just a day after the death of Princess Diana on the 31st of August in Paris, which was major international news at the time. This unfortunately made Connie's story less important for the newspapers and there was almost no coverage on the case. It wasn't until 2012 that the case would receive fresh attention after being featured on an unsolved crimes television show from TV2, Bornholm, in the country, marking the 15th anniversary of the killing. The police have questioned 2,000 individuals and taken 600 blood samples as a part of the investigation. Yet they have failed to generate many leads, despite Bornholm only having a population of around 40,000 and only 14,000 living in the specific area that she lived in. A good deal of investigation work was done and the police had DNA testimony and some information about the perpetrator's behavior at the crime scene. So they actually know a lot about this unknown person, meaning that the case should not be unresolved. So now let's get into some theories in the case. One theory brought up is that the perpetrator was a foreigner, perhaps a sailor, explaining why there are so few local leads in the small community where everybody knows everyone. This would also match how he chewed the cigarettes and explain why he has never been found. He simply might have just been gone in the morning if he left on a ship or a ferry before Connie was even found. The question in this case would be why she would have let him into her apartment or how she even knew him. Like, did did she meet him at the cafe or where? I mean, there were not exactly dating apps during this time, so it was not that easy to just meet someone like it is today. Others suggest that the man might have been a lover, with the wine offering an intimacy beyond casual acquaintances, which I kind of don't agree with. I think that you can have wine with someone, even if it's just a friend, but... That's just my personal opinion. This would explain the whole crime scene, basically, since it seemed like she knew him or like they had some kind of date, but I just feel like he would have been found if it would have been a lover or haven't the investigators looked into everyone close to her already? I'm not sure. Another theory presented by Connie's brother is that the murder had a drugs angle, suggesting that his sister was involved in some kind of drug smuggling operation. However, no evidence for this has ever been made public. I don't know if maybe her brother has some more information about this, because from the outside it sounds pretty far-fetched if she wasn't a part of those circles in some kind of way. Personally, I kind of believe that it was some kind of random date and that the person probably does not live on the island or maybe even in Denmark. As the case was featured on the local TV show, the case finally got some attention, but it was not enough to solve the case. Despite leaving an abundance of forensic evidence at the scene, the killer has never been found, and after 25 years, a new break in the case seems unlikely. With no witnesses or motive, the death of Connie Svensson seems destined to be one of the few cases in Denmark to go unresolved. But a future profile that matches the DNA from the seven cigarettes could potentially point the police in the direction of Connie's killer. 
And it seems like this would be the only possibility of ever solving the case unless the perpetrator comes forward himself. I read online that they have put forward a citizen's proposal to be allowed to use genealogical research when solving murder and rape cases in Denmark, but I'm not sure how things have moved forward when it comes to that. Unfortunately, there is not much information around this case, even on the Danish web pages, and the information that I found was mostly the same as on the other sources, so therefore this is a bit shorter case. But I do feel like it's important to spread awareness about the smaller cases as well. And if you have any information about Connie's death, then please contact the Danish police. I'm praying that the case will one day be solved so that Connie's surroundings, especially her family and friends, will one day have some kind of peace. But that's all that I have for this case. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next case. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.